committed to making sure that you and the rest of the developer community have the latest opportunities that we can provide, especially as the mobile ecosystem explodes with the Internet of Things. Like virtually all of our public APIs, everything that we've discussed today are RESTful, they support JSON, and are exposed to HTTP. The bottom line, we're working really hard to make it easier for you. But as Ralph made clear, we see mobility as an opportunity with consumer and enterprise. So now, to talk about a new platform that will take the data you get from your connected enterprise and make it even more powerful, please help me welcome Steve McGaugh to the stage. Thank you. Thank you. As you've heard, we're here to fuel the growth of the Internet of Things. You know, whether we're talking about connected cars, wearables, or the industrial Internet. Connections are growing at a breakneck pace, and they will only accelerate, as you can see by this chart. It's a disruptive, exciting time. New business models with powerful change, you know, are afoot. And that's why we're here to talk to you. We at at and you've heard a lot about the platforms we've developed. I'm going to talk about a few more. But you, you, the developer community, you're the catalyst for the growth. So you may not know the depth of our involvement in the Internet of Things. You know, we have, I, I think Ralph mentioned, 18 million at and connected devices. In the third quarter of 2014 alone, we added 1.3 million. So if there was construction in your neighborhood, then likely that heavy equipment, whether we're forklifts or, or bulldozers, are probably connected with at and If you'd ordered anything over the holidays, and you probably did, uh, then the shipment of those, uh, those products probably were tracked by at and This is just the tip of the iceberg as industrial applications explode. And you're the ones to make this happen. So we've stepped back and we've really listened to you. And, and you've been quite vocal, by the way. Uh, but we've listened to you and you've said, make development easier. Free us to focus on applications and solve a business challenge. Provide us with development tools and services that are simple to learn and use, based on open standards and easy to scale. And for sure, make them super secure so that I can share data between applications and among multiple groups of users. Well, we've heard you. And that's why today we're announcing at and first commercially available Internet of Things service for developers. It's called the M2X Data Service. It's a painless way to store and retrieve M2M -M time series data from the cloud for a network connected device. In fact, we announced this last year at this conference in beta. And during that beta period, we've had tremendous traction with you, the developer community, with enterprise customers, and with business partners. In fact, there are over 5,000 active developers tracking over 400,000 devices, generating 280 million data records in the cloud. And that was in beta mode. So now we're going full commercial. In fact, at our hackathon this weekend, more than 50% of the participants are using the M2X API in their projects. That is a phenomenal success. And this ranges, the use of this technology, it ranges from uh, individual developers to the largest developers on the planet, whether we're talking about Ericsson or Samsung or, or a multitude of others. So this is the first of many services for the Internet of Things developers that we're announcing. In fact, we're also unveiling at and Flow Designer in beta today. It's a visual tool to speed the development of new Internet of Things applications. And it's based on Node-RED, so back to that open source technology concept. Okay, so it allows you to easily build data flows and policies for machine data. We all know that complexity is derived from the integration of the device, the network, and the application layers. So if you take the combination of MTEX data service plus AT&T Flow Designer, the goal here is to relieve you, the developers, of these hurdles without sacrificing scale or security. And this supports our goal, our common goal, of allowing the developers and their customers to focus on innovation. 
So speaking of which, I'd like to introduce two great MTAX data service partners for AT&T who are leading innovators in this space. I'd like to welcome Mark Dunson from Emerson and Blake Moret from Rockwell Automation. Hey Blake, how are you? Great, good to see you. Hey Mark, great to see you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, let's start with you, Mark. I mean, there's uh, Mark leads retail solutions for Emerson. And uh, Mark, tell us about what you're doing with MTAX Data Service. Thanks, Steve. Uh, when looking at MTAX, we value your global scale, security, and flexibility that MTAX Data Service provides. In testing, we found a concept that would help national restaurant chains. Imagine we're a fast food restaurant with hundreds of locations, each with a pre-programmed microwave oven. Today, each oven has to be reprogrammed manually by having a technician upload software updates from a thumb drive to add a new menu item. It's a slow and expensive process, but important for growing sales. Let me show you. So, so this is a microwave. It doesn't look like the one in my kitchen. Uh, but it has two menu items, flatbread and American sub. Okay, Correct. I got it. Now, with m to x data service, it's easier to push these software updates remotely. Today, Brad's doing it from the stage. The new menu items are updated to the ovens in near real time by a control panel that you see on the screen behind me. Oh, so, so now there are eight different menu items. I guess I'll take the barbecued pork. Yeah, uh, you like but the but you, could, you could actually, so with the push of a button, you could download this to microwaves for restaurants all across the country rather than sending technicians. In thousands of locations, yes. Fantastic. The ability to quickly update this really allows the acceleration of these new menu items by about 75%. And this really, this microwave oven example really represents just one of many use cases that we're developing for connected kitchen applications. A connected kitchen. Well, that's great, Mark. Thanks for sharing your concept. <laughs> really good. And thanks to Anderson for being such a great partner at at and Really great. Uh, let's check out what Rockwell's up to. Blake Moret, uh, Blake, thanks for coming and joining us today. Blake heads up control products and solutions at Rockwell Automation. Tell us what you're doing to MDX uh, innovation. Happy to do it, Steve. So at Rockwell Automation, we help companies improve the productivity and the competitiveness of their manufacturing facilities and their equipment. We're working with AT&T to offer our customers highly secure LTE and also working with the AT&T Foundry to capture diagnostic data in a reliable and a secure manner. Regardless of whether these are highly concentrated assets on the plant floor or highly distributed across geography. Let me show you. I have a driving motor that simulates one used by water utilities at a pumping station. This motor is being monitored for RPMs, voltage, current, and power. I'm going to change the frequency, which is proportional to the speed. And the AT&T flow designer is then used to segment or fork the data between Rockwell's drive controller and the AT&T M2X data services. In the dashboard behind me, you see the interactions of the motor, including power measurements, power, speed, voltage, and current, this full range of data is accessible by Rockwell Automation. Oh, I see. So, so Rockwell can see all four of these speed, current, power, voltage in the upper chart deck. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Now we're going to switch the view to show data which is available to the water utility. In this demo, we've decided to make visible the RPMs, the revolutions per minute, because that's most important to their actual process. With M2X data service and flow designer, the application development is easy to monitor and manage assets of our customers' plants. Oh, so that's the concept of forking the data. Some exactly. goes to Rockwell, different goes to the customer. Very that's right. good. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, uh, Blake. I really Thanks, appreciate Steve. that. Really, and thanks so much, Blake. Well, as you can tell, I mean, uh, all the discussion today so far has been about capturing and analyzing data and how critical it is to improve processes, improve the customer services, and creating new applications. So if you take that Rockwell example, you saw the ability to determine which data is shared with whom. 
So if we take that example one step further, let's assume that the water company wants real-time information to be sent directly to technicians' personal smartphones in a BYOD, bring your own device model. Okay? And those alerts sent to the personal smartphones raises a question. Okay, who pays the bill when that technician's accessing business applications on their own personal devices? How does the CIO track the usage? So this is a problem we set out to solve. Our solution is something we're announcing today. It's called the AT&T Work Platform. We've announced it today because it provides you, the developer community, with tools to create applications to allow enterprises to pay for company data, voice, and messaging on employee personal devices without you having to crack the back-end billing issues. This supports that trend toward bring your own devices. Mobile Iron, Good, AirWatch, Toggle, they're all embracing the AT&T work platform. So you can expect more from us on this soon. Clearly, this is an exciting time to be developing business applications. I'd like, you to, uh, I'd like to invite you to check out the Expo booth, sign up for one of the MTAX connection kits. We'll provision you right on the spot. Thank you for your time this morning. I'd now like to introduce a colleague and friend of mine, which is